Hi, I'm Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I'm here with Stephen. Every place I go, everybody always asks me, when are you going to do another tutorial with Stephen? So here he is, back with another fabulous bag for us. This is the tumbler bag, and I mean, they're just darling. Look, look at this one here. And so Stephen's going to show us how to make this. So Stephen, what do we need, what, what materials do we need if we want to make this bag? You're going to need one charm pack to make both of your the front, front and, the and the back. Okay. And then you'll need three quarters of a yard to do the bands, the button loop, the crossbody strap, and then you'll also get pocket. some pocket panels okay. out of that. So that actually should be a contrasting fabric. Yes. One that kind of stands out like, you know, you would see it. Uh, so that's three quarters of a yard of that. Right. And, and then, then how much for your lining? A half yard of the lining. And on this bag, we chose the Cave Hot Collection. Oh, that's, that's yeah, beautiful. It's, it's really, really cool fabric. Well, and you can see from these three different ones that we're doing that this bag looks cute no matter what you use. So just to recap that, we need one charm pack, three quarters of a yard of contrasting material, half a yard for the lining, and then we need some interfacing? Yeah. What I use is the Pellon Shape Flex. Okay. That... That's this stuff here. Yeah, that's, that stuff right It looks there. like white material, but it's got the bumps on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's fusible woven interfacing, so it'll give a real durable feel for the and bag. And it's called Pellon Shape Flex. And how much do we need of that? We need two yards. Two yards. Okay. So when you get ready to make this bag, and I'm actually going to learn right along with you, but the first thing you're going to do is make two panels um, sewing tumblers together, and it's going to be five in a row and four rows, correct? Right. All right, I just wanted to take a second and show you how to, how to sew on this uh, tumbler because they're just so simple and easy, and I just want to make sure that everybody knows that. When I lay my tumblers, you know, you lay them uh, thin side to fat side, thin side to fat side like this so that they make a straight line. And when you lay them down, they pretty much match up, but you see, you see just a hair sticking over on either side. So right here, you can see just a little bit sticks over. So I'm going to go to this sewing machine and sew that on, if you want to hold that. And you're just going to do your regular quarter inch seam, and you're going to make four, four of these rows, right? Yes. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this row on. I put it right sides together with the uh, matching up. And every place there's a seam, I make sure those butt up tight together so that uh, they all match up. You can feel it with your finger if they're nested nicely. And then, Stephen, I'm just going to hand this over to you, let you iron that. Okay. And, uh, all right. We've got this all pressed down nicely. And we're going to cut this. We're going to cut one half of this tumbler off. Oh, okay. I'm going to turn it this way so I'm not cutting towards you. It's <laughs> a good idea. There'd Safety be a first. lot of angry ladies if I cut Jenny. I don't... <laughs> and then, since I'm right-handed, I'm going to measure 13 and a half inches from this side. Okay. Do you want to cut this one? Well, I can. I know you're an ambidextrous cutter. I'll do it this way. Okay. I am not always ambidextrous, but I can be on a good day. This looks a little narrower. Do you want me to like make this even? No, it's not going to matter on, oh, the, okay. on the end of so the thir bag. So we're going, we're up going for a 13, 13 and, a half. and a half inch piece. All right, there we are. Okay, the next step is just to fold it in half along this one creased line All right. where our seam meets. So the way that I make the curve is I measure down an inch on one side. Okay, let's mark. Let's measure and mark that. Okay. So get the. Do you do you ruler it or do you just? If I have a mat here, I'll just use the squares on the mat. Oh, okay. Well, I wasn't even noticing we had a mat. All right, there we go. And then two and a half inches on the other side. All right. So I've lined this up along here so this is straight and make sure my middle is straight. Then I'm coming down from the top two and a half, and I'm going to put a, a mark right there. And now you can find the center of the bag, which is right about there. Okay. And what we're going to do is make a straight cut from the one inch side to the center. And then this side we're going to curve a little to give the bag a little shape. Okay. Can I do the straight? Absolutely. That looks, that looks the easiest. <laughs> 
You know me. I'm always going for the easy one. There we go. All right, I'm just going to cut along here then. So I've lined up my ruler at the middle and then down here to the inch. Now, all right, what I'm going to do Mr. Magic. is I'm, I'm going to go from the two and a half inch line up to the center. Okay. And you can either start over here or start up here. It doesn't really matter. It's just kind of a giving it a curve. Now, do you ever use like a, a template or a bowl or well, a... Well, when I, when I wrote this pattern, mm -hmm. um, I made it out of poster board. You can keep drawing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, made the, I made the pattern out of poster board. Yeah. And I wanted to make it, make it so I can show people without having to use a pattern. So they can do this at home well, without having to use it. I think that's one of the really cool things about a lot of this is that for me, when I read a pattern, it's like, you know, wah, 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 wah. And, and the, if you can just do this, I think that's awesome. Yeah, and then you just take your... So can you get this wrong? No, no, no absolutely can't. not. So if your curve is more, even more curvy, it's still yeah. going to be fine because this becomes your pattern, right? Right, this is going to be the pattern for the lining panel and the other main panel of the bag. So. Awesome. Your curve is your curve. It's kind of like your quarter inch. There you go. They are personal to us. <laughs> we I'm, each have our own. I'm just going to cut along this line that I've drawn on there. Alrighty. And now we have most of our main panel of the bag. Okay, so here's how that looks. See how it curves? All right, so now we, there's, a, there's what's next? The next thing we're going to do is put on the interfacing for the main panel. Here, I'm just going to throw these down here. I'm going to keep you all tidy. Okay. So we want to make sure that our interfacing doesn't have any wrinkles in it. I'm going to line the flat edge up with the side and I'm just going to cut and follow my curves and okay. cut out the interfacing. You're, you're really brave to do that. I, I know. I've <laughs> You've I've been done doing a lot of construction while. in my in my life, and so I've I've cut with some. Yeah. I did carpet. I would probably uh, rough cut it out, iron it on, and then trim it with scissors. That's what I would probably that's, do. That's a definite option. All right, we've got our we go. interfacing cut out. And We're this gonna... interfacing just really helps the body of the bag. You know, you'll notice these. I mean, these are, these are, they just feel, you know, they have good texture yeah, to them. Yeah, it's definitely a heavy duty bag. Yeah. You can throw it in the washer whenever you need to I wash it. I just love how, how much on it On this helps. bright one, I know you need to use the cold cycle so your colors don't bleed all over. There you over. go, there you go. And this fabric that we use, you used for this bright one is this um, uh, from Rowan, isn't it? Yeah, it's Cape Facet and it's his hot collection. The hot collection. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. He's also got a cold collection that has blues and greens. And you, when you iron on your interfacing, do you generally iron it from the top? I, I start it from the top and then I'll flip it over and okay. make sure it gets plenty of heat. That's one thing. It takes a lot of heat and a lot of steam for this stuff to stick. <laughs> Now at this point, would you go ahead and um, would you sew? Would you just do the front, or would you sew all your um, your tumblers for the back as well and do them both kind of at yeah, the same time? Yeah, I would do both panels at the same time. Okay. It'll it'll be a same a time saver for the end. Also. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is cut out the curves for our for our bands, mm -hmm. and what we're going to need for that is a three and a half inch strip by sixteen and a half inches. And you're just going to lay. Or however wide your curve right. ends up. As, as long as your curve ends up. Yeah. And all we're going to want to do is continue the curve. So you can take your short ruler and yeah. line it up with the edge of this curve. That straight line that like you got that. to make. Okay. And that will. And then you just trim this right. off. Right. And you can go ahead and do that Ooh. now. Now, would you have lined, lined this first? Because I you noticed can, this doesn't have the interface. You can put the interfacing on afterwards. Okay. You just want to make sure you interface it before you before you sew it on. Okay. I'm going to cut this other side. There we go. All right. So I've, I've already got one interface for us. Perfect. And we will go ahead and sew that on. All right. I shall do that. 
Now I'm just sewing this, keeping it at the quarter of an inch. Actually, we want to use a half inch on, on <gasps> this do? part. We do? All right, hang on. Sorry, I should have told you that. I will go back. Is there a reason for that? Half inch is just a standard bag bag seam instead of the instead of the quarter inch for quilting bags usually go with a half inch all right well, the, mine's going to be pretty close to a half an inch it's looks not, good it's not going to be perfect because i got a quarter inch foot on there all right so then we would press that yep back. we're going to press towards the band and that'll give us a spot to top stitch. Okay, perfect. Now I like to iron it from the front also to make sure it's really stuck down. And no creases. Mm -hmm. You know, I find a lot of times, I, I usually iron from the front first just to make sure there's no folds and creases in there. So then you'll just top stitch this down? Yes. Okay. So what are we going to do after this? While I'm top stitching, what's and, the very next part? Um, the next part is you're just going to attach the front and the back together. Mm -hmm. And I already have a completed front panel. And Stephen really likes the triple stitch. And um, I'm just doing a single stitch right here just for time's sake. But that triple stitch is beautiful. And if it sticks out a little bit over like that, would you just trim that off? Yeah, we'll just, we can trim it off now or we can even sew the bag together and trim it all together. Or what we could do is lay our panels together. Make sure they're and identical. Even, even if they're not identical, we can use these to make the rest of the panel. Okay. So we should probably go ahead and cut the lining panels out all after, right, after this. So... We'll make these match. And I'm just gonna follow my panel that we had just made. On this We're side. pretty close. Yeah. See, that just shows that it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. You're gonna make it your own. Now, so this is your pattern for the panel. Right. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is, if you want to grab that fabric over there, okay. you can cut a 15 and a half inch by 18 inch. So it's going to be a half yard and cut it down to 15 and a half. Okay. And I usually start on the selvage side, cut the selvage edge off, and then go from there. That'll give us this much to cut our, our pocket panels out of. Oh, okay. And they're only going to be 9 by 10, so we'll get to those in a, in a minute. So we want to just lay this right on like that. And it's, it's not a big deal if, if it doesn't go all the way to the top. Um, the lining will just sit right inside the bag. So oh, okay, it'll, perfect. it'll sit right in there comfortably. And we'll follow our curve. But it's a, it, again, it's one of those things where it's all right if it's identical, correct? Right. Okay. But if it's just a little short, because you're sewing them separately and setting them mm -hmm. down in, it'll just it's, give you that little bit of room in between. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn this around. And now we have the lining panels. And do you line those also with the... The interfacing. Interfacing. Right. Okay, perfect. All right, so I've already got some of the lining panels cut and interfaced. Okay. And if you don't feel comfortable using your rotary cutter to follow those curves, you can use scissors and... Yeah, because and do I, don't, I don't know how well I would do that. You know, I just, I just don't right. know how... You know how comfortable I am, but it's good to know we can use scissors. Yeah, you can use scissors. Press chickens <laughs> for that, and you can also, if you wanted to iron on your, if you wanted to rough cut the interfacing, uh -huh. then use the scissors you to can do the same thing. Yeah, you can do that also. All right. All right, we're gonna put this aside, and we'll sew those together later. Next thing we want to do is just sew our main panels together. All right. And so I'm just going to start up here at the top and circle all the way around. That's Correct. Right. 
and we use a half inch seam on everything except for the tumblers. So for me, the half inch seam, I'm just leaving a, a little bit uh, on the outside of my foot. It's, it's not exact, but it's, um, it's close. I mean, you can measure exactly if you want, but I don't think it has to be exact. Does it, Stephen? No, it, it doesn't have to be exact. It gives you a little room to, when we do our gussets on this bag, yeah. it'll give some, some of the seam allowance extra that you can press to the sides. Alrighty. All right, so now what's next? All right, next thing we're going to open up our seam allowance and make the gussets. Okay. So what I do is I match the um, top or the side piece and the bottom piece and I will iron those open. It will form a corner at the bottom of the bag. Uh -huh. I go in an inch and then two and a half inches on each side from the point. Okay. So we'll iron this flat. And that, and that gives us this little uh, this little bottom right here so that your your bag actually has uh, a little bit of a sit down to it. Gives it some some body and sits down just really nice. All right. So you're going to hold hold your seam allowance open and you can use a tape measure or if you have a ruler handy, you're just going to go from the tip in one inch and this is approximate also it's and then two and a half inches from the tip make a little mark and then two and a half inches from the other side and now make a curved line from the center oh from out here Right, from, from that center mark that we made, mm -hmm. we're going to make a curve just like this, and you're just going to sew right along the curve. All right. All right. And let's do the other side. I'm going to put a pin in there so it stays. Okay. I know you're shocked. I'm using a pin. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even use my ruler. I just kind of mark it. Mm-hmm. Because it's my bag, I can, I can right. make it that way, right? <laughs> That's right. This right. blue doesn't so show two, up very well. The two and, and a half comes from the point. Right. From the point, okay. you're going to measure two and a half. And the one comes from the point going right up the right. seam. Right. Everything comes from that point. So that's cool. You're so right. Two and a half. And make our little smile. All right, and All you right. can just sew along that line and backstitch it both ends. <gasps> okay. Something I don't always do in quilting, so I'm glad you reminded me. In quilting, every seam is in another seam, so you can backstitch if you want to, but you don't have to. But since you asked me so nice, I Yes, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, we're back stitching. Make sure you can see this here where we're sewing this. I'm going to take this pin out before I hit it. There we go. And back stitching. All righty, there you go. All right, looks good. And now you can either use scissors. I usually have the rotary cutter right handy, so I'm going to cut this down to a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay approximately quarter inch just to get rid of the bulk all right and that's the completed main panel we'll go ahead and turn it that's right awesome. side out and that's the main part of the bag yes ma'am that's very very cool it's beautiful actually Okay. Now, there's, where's that other bag we had? Oh, this one right here. 
So this is a cool idea because on this one, you'll notice that he used charm packs on the front, but just the solid on the back. So for this one, you could actually get, out of one charm pack, you could get two bags. Right, and you can buy a fat quarter and, and make that yeah, other, the other side. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, All so right. now we, have to, we need to do the lining, correct? Yes. Before we, before we sew our lining panels together, we're going to make a pocket for it. Perfect. Because every woman needs a pocket in her bag. Or, or several. <laughs> or several. So we're going to have two in this one. Okay. This panel, I've already done the pocket. And all we're going to do is the extra that we had from our bands and handle fabric, we're going to take two 9 by 10 inch, well, not exactly squares, but rectangles out of that. And then also from the lining fabric, we're going to make two 9 by 10 inch okay. rectangles. Okay, and have you put the interfacing on, on the, one side? Right. Okay. I usually put it on the front side, the one that faces out. Okay. And there's no real particular reason for it. Okay. That's just what I like to well, do. Well, it, it, it makes it look um, really stiff and nice. Mm -hmm. So all we're going to do is after you cut out and interface one of them, you're going to sew leaving about three inches in the center and I usually start at the top mm -hmm. and sew all the way around half inch seam. And then we turn it. And then we'll turn it out. Okay. So now that you have this all turned out, we're going to go ahead and, and tuck the opening in and press it and then we'll top stitch across the front side. All right, now we just need a top stitch and you can use just a regular top stitch or you can use the triple stitch. Okay. I really like that triple stitch. So just, I'm just gonna go, I'm actually gonna do this, uh, a top stitch is, is pretty close to the top so I'm gonna do a, a quarter of an inch okay. and I'm not gonna triple because um, you know, just for the sake of time, but the triple okay. stitch, you'll be able to see the difference right away with, with, uh, between this one right here and that triple stitch. See how much darker that is. It goes, you know, three stitches over there. Same look, but a much, much prettier, more finished stitch on it. There we go. All right. Now what we're going to do is attach the pocket onto the lining panel. Mm -hmm. So we'll move this one out of the way. This is what it's going to look like when it's, when it's finished. And what we want to do is we can go about five inches down from the top. You can estimate it or you can get out a ruler and measure it down. But I'm just going to kind of guess where the center is. Okay. And then pin it in place just like this. And then this looks like we, you've sewn this down like a quarter of an inch. Yes. Either so that's a quarter a little, a little or closer an eighth. to the edge. Right. Okay. You want it so that way the pocket's not the po edge isn't flapping around. Okay. Okay. Getting I can cookie do that. crumbs stuck in it. <laughs> All right. So I usually just pin the four corners and sew right along the sides. All right. So now we pin this on and I'm just going to line up my foot on that edge back stitch. All right. So we got both of these panels. Pockets right. on both sides. Yes, ma'am. Now we're going to attach the two together. And on this, we'll just sew all the way around it. Okay. So I'll do that and meet you right back here. Okay. So I have already sewn this together and I did the gussets. Yes. So we're ready to go. Now do we turn this right side out or do no, we? No, we're going to leave it okay. we're going to leave it inside out and we'll slide it over our main panel when it comes time. The next thing that we're going to want to do is attach a handle. Oh, those straps. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> We got to remember those straps. Sometimes those handles <laughs> sneak right by. They sneak right by. Yes, we're going to put one crossbody strap which you can either okay, wear which, it. Okay. And this is the crossbody. It's right. just one strap. You can either wear it across or right. you can use it as a shoulder bag. Very and cool. And that's all we're going to make for this one. And so do you just, uh, how wide is this? This is five inches by the width of the fabric. Okay. 
and you just need a five inch strip and then you're going to take it over to your iron and iron it in half like this and so then we're going we're to iron it first we're going to iron the whole thing in half right then we'll iron the sides to the middle is that right yes yes you're going to meet that center crease and then the last step will be to iron all the way oh okay and then um, we also need to add um, our little button holder, our little button flap the right button here. Loop. Yeah, the button loop. You're going to make you. that. I forgot its real name. <laughs> the button loop. The button loop. And so you're going to make that in the same way. Exactly the same. Right. And then on each how, of these, you're going to you're going to stitch top stitch along the long edge. Okay. So how wide is the one for the button loop? The one for the button loop is only four inches. Four inches by what? By twelve. So four by 12, we're ironing it in half and then folding those middle pieces in like this. Yes. And then folding it over. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sew along this edge and along this edge. Yeah. And then um, we have one, the little one right. done here. I've, I've done one up for us. And, Excellent. And it's all ready to go. After you get both sides top stitched on the button, on the button loop, you're gonna find your center point. Well, wait. Why don't I? Why don't I just go okay. sew this, and then I'll meet you back here. All right. Sounds good. All righty. Okay. So I did my top stitching. Okay, that on looks the whole great. Handle. And again, you can use this triple stitch, or you can use a regular stitch, and and probably they could even put in some interfacing, interfacing. if they wanted. Yeah, definitely. For more stability, this. I mean, four pieces of fabric sewn together makes it pretty yeah. strong. But for even more stability, you could put interfacing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, the next step is the button loop. And so after you... These button loops are so cool. Yeah, Honestly, they really they're are. They're a lot of fun because it, it takes out the having to make the button stitch. Button yeah. hole stitch for me Everybody is Everybody freaks like, out about a button hole. I don't yeah. like them. I just like to make my loop. Yeah. So what we're going to do is find the center point of the button loop. And you're going to fold one side down so you have like a seven or... If you turn it, it will be an L. Okay, okay. Okay, so <laughs> we sold one side, and, side down. Then you're going to fold the other side down, and it gives you a nice triangle. And then I like to press this down so I don't lose my cool okay. triangle. So you're just going to give that a nice stiff, a nice steam. crease. Yeah, there you go. So now we have it creased, and you're going to overlap one side about an eighth of an inch. Okay. And that's going to keep your button in place whenever you get it all sewn together. All so, right, so the first thing I need to do is just lay this on top of each other like this. Right. And then sew across here. Yeah, you can just do a little stitch to tack okay. it down. I'll tack it. So I'll just go back and forth right there. Woohoo! <laughs> all right. And then also what I like to do is stitch down the triangle so it doesn't we don't lose that. We can go ahead and okay. do that. Okay, let me also. stitch that down too. And so you have to make sure you're on this upper fabric, right? Yes. And do you stitch and all the way across or just no, the little, just, the little just place? No, just a little, okay. little place. Just right across where they meet. So maybe from stitch line to stitch line. Right. There we go. And and you probably have to have a button, correct? To, to measure how big you want the hole to be, yeah, you need your you need a button. I have a really cool button over here. Let me go get it. Okay, so here's my button jar. Hey, look, right here on top. That looks pretty good. That's perfect. I like that one. What I like about the open chank ones is you can actually sew them on with the sewing yeah. machine. Do you do that too? Always. 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 Me too. Here, all right, let me move my button jar. Okay. Put that over here. There we go. It's a lot of buttons. I love buttons. I love buttons. And a lot of these are from um, my uh, great aunt had a, a, a dry goods store. And a lot of those buttons came from her store. So they're kind of fun. You know, one me. of my favorite ways to get buttons is go to the thrift store and, and cut them off the jackets <laughs> after you buy the jacket. There you go. There you go. So now we have our buttons. So we know how big the buttonhole needs to be. So I put a pin right here and okay. I'm just going to sew that across. And I just do it the same way I did the other one, right? Yes, ma'am. And do you, you generally leave a little bit of room on either side of your button? Yeah, that way you can actually get it open and closed. Oh, yeah. There's, there's nothing worse than one that's too small and you just can't even fit it through. So The button gets stuck. All right. So now our little button loop is ready to go. 
Now, wh now what's next? Now to add a little flair to it, you can do this at home. This is a little variation. You see how I've got a little bit of a decorative stitch. Oh yeah. And you can do that on either side of the button after. Oh, that's kind of fun. If that's what that's you really want to do. That's really fun. But for stability, that'll work just fine. Okay, perfect. All right, so the next thing we want to do is attach this to the main panel. Okay. And this bag is really easy to find the center because you have a nice line. Oh, perfect. And we're just going to pin this into place All right. right in the middle. There we go. Okay, so now that we have that, we might stick another pin okay. right on the other side because it might move. <laughs> Steven is a pinner. I'm a pinner. And then these handles. Yep, and we'll just pin those onto the sides. All right, like this. Yeah. So we, we use the side seam as our guide. Right. For to pla find handle placement. And then you want to make sure this isn't. Don't have any twists in twists. it. Twists. And we'll pin there it. There we go, like this. Right on the other and side. Pin it on this side. There we go. And the reason we only have to pin that is when we sew the front and the back together, when we sew the inside and outside together, it'll encase all of that. Oh, perfect. All, all right, right, so now what? The next thing, we're just going to take sure the whole handle. outside and slip it right into the inside. All righty. And we'll push the gussets together. And then... Make sure the handle and the button loop and everything get inside and we'll pin around the top. Okay. So I'll put, I'm going to, I'm going to actually squeeze this pin out of this handle and move it to the outside. Okay. If that's all right. That sounds good to me. Then we won't get a pin inside our bag, which might be dreadful. <laughs> yeah. Now we leave an opening on along this top part for turning. Uh, yes, we're going to leave about a four to six inch opening. Okay, so I'll leave that. I'll, I'll put two pins on either side back here and that will give me that opening. So now we have this all pinned on and I just sew around the top? Yes. And again, using that half an inch? Half inch. All right, we'll do it. Here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna sew all the way around the top of this. I'm doing a half an inch. Taking my pins out as I go along, but making sure I don't lose my handles on the way. All right, looks good. This is my favorite part. You get to close the bag and then whenever it's all finished. Yeah. Then all we'll have left to do is sew the button on and top stitch it closed. Almost there, hang on. All right. All right. All right, this is the way that I usually turn a bag. I'll put my hand in the opening uh -huh. and just grab something and start pulling it out. Okay, that makes it easy. <laughs> there it comes. And we'll follow through with the... Check through all of our parts. I've actually still got a little pin on that button flap, so you're going to want to find that when you... Yeah, I Be careful it. and not... Don't I poke yourself. I found it. <laughs> don't, don't poke yourself. <laughs> okay. There it is. There it is. All right. And then, now that we've got it pulled out, we'll just put the lining back inside. With the, and it all ends up in just the right way. That's so awesome. All right. Now we have it sewn now, together. You can iron this top part down? Yes. Okay. Make sure this is all nice and rolled out here. And this piece, that looks really cool, doesn't it? Yep. And we want to iron that down. All right. Just make sure our edges match. And then after we get it ironed down, we'll just top stitch all the way around, and that'll finish the bag. Well, we still have the button. <laughs> <laughs> Sew the button on. 
Okay, we've got a nice crease on the top. If you want to just sew all the way around or... I would be delighted. This, this, uh, so just like a little quarter inch tops, top stitching. Eighth or a quarter would be just fine. That'll all close right. our bag up. And do you have any place where you like to start? I usually start on the side whenever I top I stitch. Do I do too. Just to hide the, yeah, the start and finish. It. And I want to make sure it's this way. My handles are up, right? Yeah, we don't want to sew them halfway in. All right, a little, little bit of back stitch. Make sure this stays folded down. Round to this handle. Now this is where if you took your uh, if you took your guard off your machine, it would it would you'd be able to get that all around right. that neck, and uh, it would work really well. So now we've got this one all finished and top stitched, and all we have left to do is add that button on there, and that is just going to be darling. This what what uh, what fabric is this? This is Flutter by Alex Anderson. Oh, for it's just adorable. RJR. And what I love is you know you just change your fabric a little bit, you know, get a different charm pack, and it's a whole different yeah. bag. So let's take a look at this one here. We've got our buttons sewn on. And we actually use the sewing machine to do that. And um, we just drop the feed dogs and do a wide zigzag. Right. Just make sure you're, you're, when you put your needle down, turn it down one time by yourself so that you make sure that you don't break so your button. Or your needle off. Or your needle. <laughs> and then you just slip that around, all top stitched in perfect. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial from Jenny. And Steven. From the Missouri Star Quilt Company. The gussets. All right. So we're getting really close. Good. I'm even going to flip it. <laughs> Look at that, baby. Do we want to flip it? No. No. I'm going to unflip it. I'm going to unflip it. <laughs>